Christmas. If you're not ready, you better get that way. It's a coming like a freight train, and uh, uh, we're glad that you have decided to join us today uh, as we worship God, and uh, hope that you will make yourself at home and think of coming back to visit us. All right, let us begin with our choir and a call to worship. And now if you'll stand and sing with us as we sing away, no, I'm sorry, angels we have heard on high. You may be seated. Fire burns. It hurts. It can destroy. 
Fire also gives warmth and light. The coming of Christ is both a day of judgment and a day of promise. Two candles flickering brightly help us remember that the coming of Christ has many meanings. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. Psalm 85, 10, and 11. Light two candles, see them glow brightly so that they may know. How two candles show the way, making our di darkness bright as God's day. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. We have a prayer up on the screen. If we could all pray together, please. Dear, Dear God, God, we have much to do and we are not sure we will be ready for the day of your coming. In Advent's light, help us to see what is important, to be who you want us to be, and to do what you would have us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Peace from you, Jesus, is peace that surpasses all understanding. We know this world is not here to give us peace. It can only come from you. As a storm rages around us, Lord, will you fill us with your peace? The peace you give always causes me to trust in you, Despite my circumstances, Lord, I am placing all my worries and fears at the foot of the cross today. Lord, help me to be a light of peace to those around me, sharing why we don't have to be afraid when the world is uncertain. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for Christmas. And now as we gather as a body of believers, we ask you, dear Lord, that in your mercy, you hear our prayers for those who are lost, those who need healing, for those who are depressed and grieving the loss of loved ones. Father, surround them with your love and kindness during this time. Keep them safe in your hands, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now if our ushers will come, we'll receive our morning offering.
receive these gifts from your people. Bless them, Lord, and may this be used to bring others to know you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you will stand with us as we do our praise and worship song, it's called Holy Forever.
song. But when I started working on the sermon, um, the words came to my mind when I sung it many years ago. And I hope that you are blessed by the words. haven't sung that song in 20 years and so forgive me for uh, not having the range I used to have <laughs> um, so this morning we are focusing on peace the peace of Christ in Advent we look at joy hope peace and love and this happens to be the peace Sunday and so as I was looking through, uh, 
I'm taking a break from our catechism for Christmas. You may say, yay, my toes are getting sore. All right, so today though, we're going to focus on Advent. And in the lectionary, I looked through the scriptures and I decided to use 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 18. And this is what the scripture says. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot, or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. So also our beloved brother Paul wrote to you, according to the wisdom given him, speaking of this as he does in all his letters, there are some things in them hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction, as they do the other scriptures. You, therefore, beloved, since you are forewarned, beware that you are not carried away with the error of the lawless and lose your own stability, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Sometimes, William and I will be watching something on TV. Uh, it can be a movie or a TV show. And it comes to the part in the movie where someone you know is going to jump out and scare you. You just know, you know, it may be a detective or a policeman or a woman going through the house and they know somebody's in the house. And you just know, you can tell by the music that it's getting ready. You just know they're going to jump out and scare you. I can't stand that. <laughs> I love it, but I hate it. You know, when that comes on, I have to confess, I may have been caught doing this. Somehow, it just seems not so bad if I'm peeping through my fingers. I have gotten up and gone to the kitchen and decided it was time to get something to eat or drink. Do you want me to pause it? No. <laughs> you know, it's just something about that doom that's coming after you that makes you just, ugh. And when you read the Bible, there's a lot of wonderful things in here. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of love and forgiveness and miracles. And there's some doom in there that makes you want to go, if you don't have Jesus in your heart, it should make you want to go and fall on your knees because it's not just a movie. It's not just TV. It's real. And it's been prophesied for many, many, many years. So 
my husband will often say, you do know it's not real, don't you? It's just a movie or it's just TV. That doesn't help. But guys, this is real. This is real stuff. Well, Peter was trying to tell the believers what was really important, that they need to pay attention to the letters that Paul had been writing about living a holy life and that the end of the world is coming as they knew it. There were a lot of false teachers who were teaching the belief in a second coming of Christ was foolish. Now these are supposed to be Christian teachers and they're teaching something that does not agree with the scriptures or the letters that Paul had written. And as a matter of fact, they were actually making fun of people who believed what Paul was saying about the second coming of Christ. Some thought it, if it were true that Christ would have already come back. Now, he had only been gone a short time here. Look how many years it's been now, over 2,000, and heading on up the scale. If they thought so then, what do we think now? But think how much closer it is to his coming. So, they didn't see anything change. People were going on with their lives as if nothing was going to happen. They stopped living holy lives. They were teaching that God's promises were unreliable and that nothing was going to happen or change. False teachers. You know, I can't help but wonder if maybe some of us have not been drinking the Kool-Aid of false teachers. We are not concerned with the second coming of Christ. We live our life as if this is all there is. This is it. You know, we teach our children to uh, do well in school and we teach our children to do well in sports and, and do all kinds of things like that. Um, it's very important that when your nose runs, you catch it. <laughs> you might say, well, right there was one. You might say it doesn't take much. I don't get, get embarrassed easily, but I do. Uh, but people are going on living life as if this is it. I better enjoy it while I can. Parents are not taking kids to church anymore. They're not saying, you need to come to church. They're saying, you have a choice. If you want to go, you can. If you don't, stay home. It's like, you have a choice. Go to heaven or hell. You know? What has happened to parents that used to tell their kids that Jesus was coming back? What's happened to that mentality? I think we have a lot of false teachers who have lulled us to sleep and we think we've got forever. All we're going to do is die and go to heaven. That's it. Somewhere in between, we forgot about living a holy life. Because God is holy. Peter was trying to tell the believers that they really needed to pay attention. Paul wrote about living a holy life and that the end of the world was coming as they knew it. So yes, there are a lot of false teachers who were teaching the belief that the second coming of Christ was foolish. They were making fun of those who believed there would be a second coming of Christ. And some thought that if Christ was uh, going to come, he would have already come back. So Peter was telling them, hey, this is real. He told them that God did not use time as we use it. This amazes me. 
At this time, they did not have any astronauts. We didn't have space programs. We had a couple that just zoop and didn't die. They just, God beamed them on up. But we didn't have anything about space travel or anything like that. And Peter was telling them that God's time is different. You know, one day as, is as a thousand years. A thousand years is as one day. God doesn't keep time like we keep time. And I want you to think about that for a moment. Um, have you ever heard that time is different for astronauts in space? According to MIT Technology Review, this form of time dilation is also real. And it's because in Einstein's theory of general relativity, gravity can bend space-time and therefore time itself. The closer a clock is to the source of gravitation, the slower time passes. The farther away the clock is from gravity, the faster time will pass. AdamParticles.com says astronauts on the ISS age more slowly being 0.0007 seconds behind every six months. So I looked up how long is one 24-hour day in space. On Earth, it's 23 hours and 56 minutes. On Mars, it's 24 hours and 37 minutes. And Jupiter, it's 9 hours and 55 minutes. Saturn, a 24-hour day, is 10 hours and 33 minutes. We don't understand time. And God's time is not like our time. When he says he's coming soon, is that by Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, or heaven? All we know is he's coming. He promised he was coming the first time, and he came. And he says, I'm coming back. You can stop time completely. All you have to do is travel at light speed. Did you know that? You can stop time. A little education for this morning. Peter knew time was different with God thousands of years ago. Another thing Peter was trying to convey to the believers was God was not acting slow because the end had not yet come, but that God is loving and kind and wants everyone to accept his son, Jesus Christ, before the end comes. So God is allowing many the opportunity to do so before the end comes. But there will come a day when God will say, I've waited long enough. Son, go get your children. All you need to do is watch YouTube videos about all the things in space that are heading our way. The natural disasters that they believe will take place. There are major fault lines all over the place. We just had a tornado in uh, Nashville. We have tornado, uh, no, earthquakes in Sparta all the time. We've had some around here. Vol volcanoes are ready to erupt. They say it won't be long that California will just fall off into the sea, that there's that San Andreas fault line, and there's another fault line. Uh, a person would have to be a fool not to believe in an end to this earth. Peter was doing his best to remind the believers they needed to be living a holy life. In other words, if they were truly believers, they needed to live as believers. He said there may be a time that people who persecute us may come to know Christ if we continue to live a holy life. 
it's hard to live a holy life in front of people who are hurting you and making fun of you. Uh, I heard a testimony many, many years ago about this hippie that got saved. His name was Mike Warrenke. I don't know if any of you ever heard of him. He was a Christian comedian. But, and he could tell some really good stories. But he told this story about, I don't know if it was him or someone that he knew that will say it's him, was in the military. And he had just become a Christian, so he was really on fire for God and excited about the things of God. And so he started sharing about God with his bunkmates in there. And there were some in there who were not receptive to hearing anything about God or Jesus. And they got very angry. And finally, one night, they told him if he didn't shut up, they were going to beat him up. Well, he just kept on telling them how much God loved him, and they beat him up. He was bloody all over. Didn't stop him. The next night, when they got back to their bunk room, he started sharing the love of Christ. They beat him up again, this time a little more. And that kept happening every night. And finally, the guy's knuckles were really bruised. You can imagine what Mike looked like. And he said the guy was start beating him again and blood was going everywhere. And he's like, man, will you please just quit talking about Jesus? He said, I don't want to hit you no more. And Mike looked at him and said, Jesus loves you more than I do. And the tears were rolling down his face. And Mike said that guy finally broke down and started crying. And he said, I have beat you to a pulp night after night trying to get you to stop talking about Jesus and you refuse to do it. You must love him so much. And he said, I do, but you don't understand. He loves me more. And he loves you more. And it's important that I share with you that Jesus loves you. And the guy was crying and he led him to the Lord. So Peter was trying to remind the believers they needed to be living a holy life. Even if people were making fun of them, were mistreating them, were punishing them. Peter said there were a lot of people who were telling false lies or tales there is no such thing as a false lie. It's either false or it's a lie or, you know. <laughs> they wanted to live a sinful life, so they created lies and tried to discredit Jesus and the requirements to live a holy life. This is what they were doing in the days of Noah. The scripture tells us that it will be like that when the second coming happens, that we will be uh, laughing and partying and giving in marriage and, and just having a good old time, forsaking our attendance in church, forsaking Jesus, forsaking living a holy life. Peter warns us of a second coming. If you are not a believer, you need to do something about that now. One of the greatest lies that Satan has is you've got plenty of time. If you're a believer and you're not trying to live a holy life, you also need to do something about that now. Everyone needs to repent. The day of the Lord is soon coming. It is time that the whole universe will be shaken to its foundations. It will be a time of judgment and punishment for sinners. You might ask, well, why in the world are you preaching on this on a day that we're talking about peace? That doesn't bring me peace. Well, it brings me peace. I gave my heart to Jesus 53 years ago. And I have peace because I won't be here. I'll be in heaven when this world comes to an end. I won't have to endure anything. 
I have peace. I can lay my head on my pillow at night and go to sleep and not have to worry if there's a tornado or a hurricane or a flood or I die. I can lay down and know that I'm in the arms of Jesus. And he has a better place built for me. And nobody can steal that. I have real peace. The only real peace that I have, Lord, is in you. That song came to my mind, so that's why I had to sing it. I am never alone. I have real peace that only comes through Christ. How about you? Would you like to receive his peace this morning as we stand and sing angels from the realms of glory? The altar is open. If you would like to come and receive Christ today, if you would love to come and repent or just pray, just because you pray doesn't mean that you've gone out and partied all night. You may be praying for somebody else. You may be praying for yourself. You may be praying for lots of things, for healing. Or doesn't mean you're a great sinner because you come to the altar to pray. But if you are a great sinner, you better be here. Let's stand. Thank you for being here today and listening and not falling asleep on me. Uh, I appreciate that greatly. Uh, I pray that you have peace this week that comes from Christ. May you go and be blessed. Amen.